Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we return to talking about the newest and upcoming release from a major movie franchise. Terminator Dark Fate is set to come out later this year, but its lead up has been quite rocky to say the least. Previously we talked about the whole woke casting of it when it was announced the film would be led by three females late last year. And then about a month ago in May, the trailer for the movie came out which had people even more worried about the project, myself included. And this is despite what we went over before. Terminator has always been a traditional female-led franchise, with prominent leading ladies all over the place, but now they're making it all ladies, an all-female one, and a reboot or sequel, with no supporting men in the cast to round things out and balance it. Like for example, there used to be the famous John Connor character, and the Terminator himself, who is of course played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. And although Arnold appears in the new trailer, it seems to be more of a cameo role. And to make matters worse, the new Protector Terminator character replacing Arnold, well, she's made a few heads turn in her her own ways as well. For example, she's super skinny, and of course, she's got that lesbian, problematic haircut, a haircut which Sarah Connor in the movie has adopted as well. Combine that with the fact that the John Connor younger hero character has been replaced by a random Mexican chicken, well, I think we can all see why this project is getting some backlash. And this isn't even mentioning the fact that the previous movie in this series was very poorly received before this. Would have been a better time to perhaps play it safe now and make something more similar to the original Terminator movies we all know and love. But instead, Terminator Dark Fate is taking a hard left turn into left-wing liberal politics coincidentally enough. And this is the kind of bullshit that has led to lots of people talking shit about this and making fun of the movie online. Again, myself included on this, of course. And well, in true social justice warrior fashion and pulling one of the biggest mistakes a movie maker can make these days, well, the Terminator Dark Fate team decided to follow in the footsteps of other failed all-female projects like Ghostbusters 2016. That movie received a lot of similar similar gripes and complaints, it too also being a sort of lady reboot of a beloved 1980s franchise. So much like how Ghostbusters acted and responded to their hate back in 2016, so too is Terminator Dark Fate making the same kinds of mistakes. Instead of accepting their criticism and taking it like a man, pun intended, well these girls and supporters, they're not really acting that way, are they? That's why they are now doubling down and attacking the fans for not liking their new movie. Well, they're attacking what few fans they have left at this point. For example, this quote and tweet from The Playlist is really fanning the flames of the fire here even more. It says, Tim Miller has a message for misogynists that aren't happy with Mackenzie Davis in Terminator 6. I don't give a F. Pretty incendiary, you must admit. It's also a reaction based on a misconception of what the hate and detractors are all about here. We're not misogynists at all. And I've never heard anyone attacking Terminator Dark Fate because they hate women. We all love women. No one's denying that. And I have nothing against this Mackenzie Davis actress either specifically. I've actually enjoyed her work on a few other shows she's been in, but the situation here she's been put into with Terminator, it's pretty untenable. And people criticizing the new Terminator have more very valid reasons to be worried here. Besides the series' horrible track record which we already went over, also, this whole going all female angle has been getting really old lately and cliched. Every franchise and their mother is doing something like this now. And by the looks of things and how this crew is acting, Terminator Dark Fate is trying to go along with that. They're even calling the people who criticize their projects sexist, which is exactly what every lady reboot does when they get valid criticism. It's like when an SJW or minority says you're a racist for criticizing, say, black people. No, criticism of a minority doesn't automatically make you racist. Just like how criticism of a woman or a female-led project doesn't automatically make you sexist. That's just a way for the person getting criticized to deflect, and it's an attempt to hide their faults by condemning the person who's calling them out. It's basically an ad hominem fallacy, if you think about it. Instead of addressing our comments and complaints directly, the crew for Terminator Dark Fate attacks us personally, saying we hate women and our reactions aren't valid then. Then, to make matters even worse here, I've read through this article being quoted by the playlist and, well, there's literally zero examples of misogynists who are unhappy with Terminator Dark Fate. They just make these broad claims and wide assumptions, but there's no actual support for this. It's like one of those things they just expect people to believe, because it kind of makes sense, and most will just go along with it without thinking twice too. Except, of course, me. I refuse. Here's the director of Terminator Dark Fate's quote anyway, which is basically him responding to fake misogynists he and the media made up. He says, If you're at all enlightened, she'll play like gangbusters, said the director. If you're a closet misogynist, she'll scare the F out of you, because she's tough and strong but very feminine. We did not trade certain gender traits for others. She's just very strong, and that frightens some dudes. You can see online the responses to some of the early shit that's out there, trolls on the internet, 
it. I don't give a F. Well, you kind of should care, guy. These are the fans and possible customers for your movie and franchise. And since your claims in this article are lacking any examples here whatsoever, I'm going to assume you're just calling all criticism and negative comments sexist or misogynist as a way to brush them off and discredit them. But then, there's also a more nefarious and terrible reason for all this too. Something new that's been happening lately is movie studios and media companies fake outrage in order to get attention for their project. Disney's The Little Mermaid did just about the same thing just about a week ago. When they announced that their new main character would be race bent into a black chick, many actually cheered it on. While some others, like myself, we complained, sure. But it was more just because Disney has been getting too woke and they're kind of hypocritical about casting white characters. But the media blew this up into a much different story, saying Little Mermaid detractors were anti-black racists, who were made to look more excited and wildly upset than we really were. And now back to Terminator Dark Fate and it looks like they're trying to spin their backlash the same way, into a much bigger and more offensive outrage than it really is, in order to not only discredit their criticism, but also to get more help, attention, and support from SJWs and woke activists. So make no mistake, people, at this point, this is a marketing PR ploy on behalf of the movie makers and the studio, and nothing more. Maybe there's like one anti-female person out there, but I wouldn't guess there's much more than that. Nothing significant. And maybe one day, the film studio will figure out that this isn't the way to get people into the theater seats, as I assume this movie Terminator Dark Fate will eventually bomb and show them otherwise. And this movie won't bomb because it has all female leads now. That's just a symptom of a greater problem, the getting woke and SJW problem. Remember, this is a series that has had female protagonists from the beginning, and they even already had a few female Terminators before too. So if people are upset with this new one's direction, we can hardly blame it on the women specifically in the movie. Really, I think it's because they're going with all women, and it seems like they're maybe pushing this whole misogynists don't like this unnecessary sequel angle in order to generate clickbait headlines and to drive goodwill towards their shitty project. Sounds like this theory might be a little out there, but I do think it's highly possible and likely to be the real reason why this fake outrage and exaggerations and mischaracterizations keep happening. Next, let's talk about why people might not be a fan of the new Terminator character specifically in the new movie. Because I think this misconception is another part of the problem which the movie makers either don't understand or want to deny and lie about. For example, here's a picture of the new Terminator, played by Mackenzie Davis, who takes on the role of the protector in the new movie. And while the director previously claimed she's very feminine, well, I hate to say it, but I'm just not seeing that. Besides the lesbian haircut, which is a bad start, but even without that, this chick doesn't even look much like a girl to me. She looks like a teenage boy, manly and butch, and possibly androgynous too. And well, let's go ahead and just say it. She kind of looks like she's a trans Terminator, a transerminator or something. I don't know what they call that. And nothing wrong with any of this either, but there has been a pretty different precedent set here with these female Terminators in the franchise. So deciding to go all gender fluid for Pride Month here is a very different approach to female Terminators than what we've seen in the series before. For comparison, next, let's take a look at the last female Terminator, played by the actress Summer Glau in the Sarah Connor Chronicles TV show. Not bad, huh? Very nice. And a huge difference from what we were looking at before, huh? Instead of making their robot butch and buff and manly, Summer here is actually looking sexy as hell, yet still somewhat intimidating and possibly dangerous. She's got some sadness behind those eyes. And this is definitely a character I would be more interested in watching for extended periods of time. I want to know more about her too already. Is she nice? Can she fight well or shoot lasers out of her hands? And most importantly, is she single? I think you guys get the point here though, but let's just look at one last Terminator before we move on. The first Lady Terminator actually. Here she is from Terminator 3, which came out in 2000. And three. Nice. Well done again. Another hot chick who looks cool and badass too. She even pulls off the short hair look, unlike the other one from the new movie. Instead of chopping her hair off and going full women's soccer player, this Terminator hottie pulled her hair back into a tight bun, which I like. And it makes her look professional and businesslike while also retaining her real, actual femininity. Not the fake kind of femininity that the new one really doesn't have. Lastly, let's talk about how Linda Hamilton, the Sarah Connor actor herself, well, she She's changed pretty drastically over the years too. In the original movie, Sarah was pretty cute and definitely somewhat of a hottie by 80 standards. Then for the next movie, she even turned into a full-blown badass by Terminator 2, getting ripped up, smoking, and turning into a pretty decent fighter and weapons handler. This version of Sarah Connor has become quite legendary over the years too. And to top things off, the T2 Linda got hotter, keeping her long hair as well and also her feminine prowess. Then later on, this Sarah Connor character would be played by even 
more hot chicks in other versions, including Lena Headey, who played her on the TV show, and Amelia Clark, who played Sarah in the last movie, Terminator Genesis. And coincidentally enough, these two actresses who are also hotties, well, that and they also would go on to play adversarial characters on the Game of Thrones HBO TV show. But that's besides the point. The point here is that, historically, the ladies in the Terminator series have been sexy, likable, and cool, and badass chicks who you want to get behind. But now, with Terminator Dark Fate, they've been morphed into lesbian and trans-looking snooze fests. Boring, lackluster versions of robots and characters, this series has done much better and much more justice to before. In the new movie, even Sarah Connor herself, who has Linda Hamilton returning to play her after all these years, well, now she's got a short, butch haircut too. And sure, she gets a pass for not being so hot anymore because she's so old, but still, I think the points stand here. And while the filmmakers and SJWs might call me sexist for pointing this stuff out, I don't see it that way at all. I see this as a franchise turning away from a previous casting trend and direction which made it famous and well-liked in the first place. Instead, they're opting to get woke and make this shit more PC and diverse, according to them. And this is also turning off old fans in the process. And finally, again, of course, Terminator Dark Fate's detractors aren't sexist misogynists. Unless you have proof of people out there directly hating women, I think it's safe to assume you're making all this sexist bullshit up as a way to deflect your criticism and get more attention for your failing project in the process. You guys ever notice how giant, successful, well-liked movies never have this kind of problem? It's only shitty, detested, failing projects that try and pull this whole, oh, we've got racist and sexist attacking us. That old bit. And this is only happening with them because they're lying and this is an effort to try and save their failed products. What do you guys think? Should directors be attacking their fans like what we saw in today's article? Do you think Terminator is getting woke here? And why did they stop casting hot chicks with good looks in the franchise? Comment your thoughts on everything below and thanks for watching No Bullshit. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time.